everybody, it's Alicia Simmons from Frontier Co-op. Um, I'm excited to share with you all today. We are on our way to Chihuahua, India to visit one of our upcoming projects. So it's actually a couple years in the works, but it's a tea processing facility in the area. Uh, we partially owned by the primarily women farmers. We are on our way with our partners, uh, Rajni Shane from Earthcraft and Ebony, and Raj Bable from Young Mountain Tea, and then my colleague Don uh, from Frontier Co-op. So, um, our little entourage today is now on our way to Liverpool uh, via train, and then we will take a four hour taxi from there up to visit the project. So, today's mission is just get there <laughs> after a lot of travel, but it's totally going to be worth it, and I'm excited to bring you all with us. Hey, you guys, where are we going? We're gonna go talk to the farmer! <laughs> yeah! This is the first group of farmers that we think are gonna become part of the venture that we're launching. And these conversations are to help them understand what it is we're offering and to really start building the trust that will be essential for the long term success of everything. Cool, these are tea bushes. And they're right now in December, they're asleep. They're in their dormant phase. So they aren't flushing. They're not sending out new shoots, which is what gets harvested to make tea. But still we can see a little bit about what's going on. So this is what gets harvested. It's just the very terminal growth. That's the bud and then the first two leaves. It's the only part that gets harvested to make quality teeth. And that's because the bud, that's uh, like the newest growth. And that's where the concentration of all the polyphenols and aminos that give the tea its flavor are concentrated. And ideally it's like these kind of smaller leaves like this that are comparatively young. And so when these, when the bushes are like in peak uh, season, like in the monsoons when they're growing their fastest, every seven days or so, the farmers have to get back to harvest the same bushes. They start to bolt. Mm. It's the farm thing. Mm. This is to enable impact at the farm level. Rider Charlie. <laughs> It's Alicia again. Um, we are out visiting um, a couple of the potential plots for the new facility today. Um, this is actually, fun fact, where Frontier Co-op's tea is actually harvested from. So we can run down and see um, some of the tea bushes. So, so you can tell the bushes are actually asleep right now. They're dormant and they will be until about April. Um, and then once April hits, they'll come back alive and they'll be uh, harvested through the beginning of the summer. We can't help but mention the fact that there are these beautiful Himalayas just over the ridge. It's amazing. Every time you get just a little bit up out of the city, you get to see the mountains immediately and they're just gorgeous. To propagate tea as in to replicate and spread it, they do it by cutting and those come from mother bushes and this first row here used to be the exact mother bushes that basically were cut and seeded the entire region so these are very important tea bushes in that they are the genetic material that has spread out across all of Kuma. so cool we are today the Then it goes into drying here. This is a static tray dryer. Uh, mm -hmm. Dry tea comes out there. That's how it works. Mm -hmm.
This is where the tea industry in Champaut begins from. It's the tea nursery. A new plant is created here and just from one leaf, which will last for 100 years. Hey everyone, we're here on the last day of our trip. It is our last evening in the Kumau region. Um, thank you so much for coming along with us for this ride. We have learned so much. It has been such an honor to get to meet these farmers and see you know, their homes and their communities and learn so much about tea. Uh, we got to see the two locations that we're looking at for the facility and we got a bit of business stuff done too and, um, while we were in Chimpawat. So um, anyway, it's been a wonderful ride. I hope you learned a little bit of something. I know I certainly did. Um, and we look forward to the next trip. Tomorrow we're heading back to Delhi. Uh, we start the very long trip back. Uh, we have about an, a six hour drive and then a, what, 10 hour train ride before we jump on our 20 hours of flights on the way home. <laughs> so uh, a long trip back, but honestly worth every minute of travel to be here. Um, can't wait to come back. Kapali ko ko chato, meri chen.